That was in May 2014 that I traveled to the United Nations headquarters in New York City for a public speaking event on women's education and empowerment. And not surprisingly, 95% of the audience comprised of young girls from all over the world. But around the world today, nearly two thirds of the 774 million people aged 15 and over who are illiterate comprise of women. Not only that, women only account for a mere 30% in all research opportunities available. This disparity, though reducing, is still trenchant and widespread. So these statistics were mere statistics printed on a piece of paper for me until I realized their true meaning and import. Being a young girl trying to establish myself, I was oblivious to the gender disparity around me until I observed my vicinity, the common classroom. We have all heard of the adage, the fittest survive. Just like we apply the theory of social Darwinism to every other ecosystem, we even apply it to today's classroom. Let me take you to a classroom in our country. So there are teachers teaching aspiring students, well, somewhat. Young boys and girls peering into their textbooks and trying to assimilate large chunks of information that will help them get into a rewarding career path. This is the picture of today's classroom. Yet, the question that I ask myself is why is it that young girls are continued to hit the glass ceiling when it comes to pursuing their dreams? To withdraw from an opportunity is a matter of choice. And I acknowledge that there are several external reasons that do hinder a girl's access to education. But we are fortunate to live in a society where more and more minds are opening towards the prospect of a girl's education. But today, my talk solely focuses on the girl student and her autonomous decisions in the classroom. The major problem that I see around me is of young girls being shut down and overshadowed by more aggressive counterparts. These girls tend to lose confidence and cannot cope with the competitive classroom environment. So I was researching in general and I came across this recent Harvard case study by Ms. Catherine J. Krupnik which highlighted why these disparities come into play in the classroom. So there were several interaction mechanisms that were cited. First, the status of girls as minority in the classroom, gender demographics. So the study showcases that boys tend to dominate mixed discussion groups in classrooms. And when girls are minorities, this does affect their interaction and participation in the classroom. Second, girls have been proven to be more vulnerable to interruption. So girls tend to speak in bursts which last a few seconds as compared to boys who tend to speak in longer uninterrupted manners. So when a girl was interrupted, the study showcased that most girls withdraw from the classroom discussion for over an hour. So let me narrate an example from my own life. So I was sitting in class one day with all my friends and we were discussing something ubiquitous like politics. So all the boys were discussing intricacies of political schemes, elections, and who they think will win. And then suddenly, one of my female friends decided to pitch in with her own idea. And then what happened? She was sharply and abruptly cut off by one of the boys who pointed out a fallacy in her remark. And this led to my friend equally and abruptly retiring from this classroom discussion. Third, a study of mixed discussion groups. So when exclusively female groups were studied, the study showed that the girls followed a more rotatory and egalitarian manner of speaking. While in an exclusively male discussion group, boys were speaking in a more contest-like manner and adding personal anecdotes from time to time. When translated to an actual classroom, the male form of interaction tended to dominate. So one fact that hits me squarely in the face is that girls tend to doubt themselves more than boys. When girls, some girls are told things like, you know, you can't do this, they're more likely to believe such an instruction. 
And this behavior is clearly linked to the survival of the fittest. And I want to emphasize that the fittest is neither a girl nor a boy, but merely a student who is brave enough to address the storms of the classroom and is receptive to change. Today, I want to discuss how girls can be empowered in the classroom and become bolder. So here is my story. So I decided to opt for the science and economics track in school. And I found myself in a predominantly male classroom. But I've always believed that girls can shine no matter what. So I decided to pursue a project that was beyond my immediate school curriculum. Many people told me, you know, you don't need to distract yourself. There's no time for this. What are you doing? But I was determined. I believed in the potential of my idea, and I decided to pursue it. So I would chase veterinarians, scholars, I would chase scientists, and I would demand explanations to complex phenomena. I was determined, resolute, and I would refuse to take no for an answer. Sometimes I was even called bossy, but I believed in the power of my project. And this led to my eventually creating a device that could help detect distress in animals. Called Project Pet Safe. So I was really personally satisfied to be able to make, a, make an impact to the street dogs that are found in my vicinity and in my society. But not only that, I was later recognized in the form of an award from the Honorable President of India. So as Ms. Cheryl Sandberg, iconic businesswoman and COO of Facebook, as they all know her, says, that women should lean in workforces. I want to extend the lean in message to girls in classrooms, to girls my age. Right now, we all are still young. We are still developing, and we haven't reached the apex of our mission. But I do hope that someday we will. And this is the right time to start. So my advice to girls my age is to grab the mic. Seriously, just grab the mic. So once in school, we were to present on the global problem of nuclear technology. Our teacher divided us purposely into groups of three boys and three girls. So we were supposed to explain the ramifications of nuclear technology to our class, and then they would pose us questions. So one of the girls in our group was too nervous to speak out, and she decided to refrain from answering the questions. But my other friend and I, we emphatically agreed to take on questions one by one. And that's what we did. So we were called bossy by the boys. They wanted to answer the questions. But we were really happy that we stepped in confidently to take questions one by one. Our presentation was wonderful. We received the highest grade in the class. And we girls felt wonderful. So seriously, grab the mic. Take power. So the second thing that I want to emphasize is that we must take the classes we want. So I know several girls around me who have been told things like, you don't need to take a science class. This is not for girls. You don't need to pursue this path. Well, that's not the case. My advice to all girls my age is to pursue the classes you want. Do what you want and take your own risks. And thirdly, and this is actually my personal goal, to dare to dream my dream. Take risks and be grateful for what you have. When you receive an award, don't say that you got lucky. Many people do that. But instead, say that you did create your own luck and believe in your hard work. Confidence builds on itself, and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So as Ms. Cheryl Sandberg says, we move in closer to the true goal of global equality with every woman who leans in. I hope that more girls will lean in classrooms. I hope that more girls my age will continue to grab opportunities and take power. I know that the path to true equality is neither straight and nor linear. It will take us time to reach there. But I do hope that someday we can. And I do hope that we can inspire more girls to lean in their classroom environments. Thank you so much.